I would like to introduce Neil Meredith. He is from the architecture firm MG McGrath, and he's going to talk about how they're using the 3D Experience platform for innovation in the architectural engineering and construction industry. So, Neil, welcome to the stage. Good morning. Uh, thank you, first of all, to Jerry Jackson and the rest of the AC group for the invitation to come and speak today. Uh, I think this is the closest I've come to giving a TED talk so far. <laughs> All right, just a bit of, uh, by way of background, um, uh, work within the AEC industry, architecture, engineering, construction, um, and MG McGrath, which is the company where I work at, is, is within the, the C column of that. So we're an architectural, uh, go to the next slide here, we're an architectural surfaces company where we've, we fabricate and install architectural surfaces. So what do we mean by architectural surfaces? Uh, we have two main companies. Uh, one is an exterior enclosure company, primarily working in metal, um, but can also work in kind of different systems, and also a glass and glazing company. So we're headquartered in Maplewood, uh, Minnesota. We have a 100,000 square foot facility. Uh, on, the, on the left is the, the glass plant. On the right is the, the metal and glazing. So a, a, you know, we fabricate and, and design uh, a lot of our own systems working with architects. Uh, engineers and construction management and contracting. So, yeah, some screenshots of our facility. So designing, fabricating, insta installing and assembling pieces all within our facility and then bringing those uh, to the job site for installation. Okay, here's a, a, just a short video. A bit People are that. challenging us to do things that have never been done, things that are very, very custom and unique. Um, the schedules are getting shorter and shorter. The time to execute the work is getting Shorter and shorter, um, prices are getting more and more competitive. And what we provide on a, on a normal basis today is much different than it was 10 to 15 years ago. MG McGrath is a national fabricator and installer of architectural surfaces. We're constantly focusing on is just maintaining our culture, making sure our reputation stays as good or better than it is currently, um, and not sort of losing sight of how we got here and what got us here, what made us successful. The 3D Experience platform has allowed us to offer much more custom solutions at a much more affordable price today. Be able to shorten the amount of time spent with some of the fabrication. We've been able to get the technology right out on the shop floor, in our field, etc., to help drive those efficiencies and some of the real custom work that we do. 3D Experience platform inspires inspiration in the fact that the possibilities are limitless. But when you collaborate across companies and, and with other stakeholders, you open up this area where the wealth of information is at your fingertips and you can utilize and leverage 3D Experience to give that info that you need. Prior to using the 3D Experience platform, uh, we spend a lot of time dealing with files and making sure everyone had the same set of information. With the 3D experience, that's gone away and we can largely focus what's going on within the project from, in terms of project content and not having to worry about do they have the most up-to-date files. It saved us a lot of the, the busy work of managing that set of information. To date, the biggest business impact has been allowing us to do things that we probably would never have been able to accomplish before. And when we challenge our people, it makes us very successful, it really adds to the dynamic of our culture. I'd like to talk a little bit about how we use design technology as a company, just to give a kind of general approach about how we're applying uh, the use of the 3D experience platform uh, within our own company, and uh, not, not only on a single project, but across multiple projects. Uh, and then I'll uh, dig a little bit deeper into a single project, which is the United States Olympic Museum. Okay, so how do we use design technology? Let's say uh, within the unique to the AC industry is that we're actually uh, behind uh, manufacturing, aerospace, all these other kind of industries we've been looking for, for technology leadership over the last 20 years. And in, in a weird way, has actually presented an opportunity for us. We don't have a backlog of 
PLM systems or um, you know, large data sets that we really need to migrate or, or, or transition to new systems. So we are a completely on cloud um, 2018X industry. So our entire company and the entire industry is starting out for the users of that for the users of that platform within the kind of cloud systems and things like that. So there's also an increased level of the, the desire for sophistication and kind of usage of the technology within the industry, which we're, we're trying to drive uh, through this platform. So not having the way it's been done has been a kind of advantage for us and also a challenge. So I want to you know, show how that's been kind of used. So here we have a, um, our typical process of, of how you know, getting a project from award with the contract, working with an architect and designer, and then taking that all the way through uh, fabrication and installation. When we're looking at any design technology, we're, we're really trying to answer four questions within our company. Uh, how do we automate the repetitive stuff? How do we maintain a single source of truth? Really using the kind of model to drive that. Reduce the interpretation of design documents. And this, this third image is really typical. And I, it looks like maybe the dark ages to a lot of you coming from the manufacturing, but printed, you know, t like two-dimensional drawing sets are really the, the still uh, the common language within architecture. Um, and lastly, to make production data actionable. So um, real-time uh, uh, database and, and model-driven tracking of information and data is, is becoming much more important instead of someone going out to the shop floor with a highlighter and you know, marking up quantities and inventories and things like that. We, we just can't, um, can't continue to work that way and actually compete in a way that um, you know, brings us to the 21st century. So. Okay, so with, the, with this model-based process, using the 3D model to drive all these aspects of the business. So for us, this really represents uh, the 3D experience platform. We're also looking at leveraging the engineering template technology, which is within the CATIA portfolio, as a way to use uh, a, an approach to building things that can be applied across multiple projects. So if we have a, a template that handles architectural composite materials and unfolds those for, for fabrication, we could apply that to multiple projects without reinventing that process all the time. Okay, so we're going to focus just on that within that larger diagram, this kind of step from taking a design model through to fabrication. So the United States Olympic Museum, a 60,000 square foot uh, facility being built in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, it's an it's a interactive exhibition, um, really a, a museum of, about the Olympics and the, the experience of the Olympics. So designed by Diller and Scofidio and Renfro uh, out of New York City, uh, where I'm also based, where we also have a small field office. Uh, we're working on two primary scopes of the enclosure, the exterior of the building. One is a signature uh, metal system, which you can see kind of on that pinwheel shape. That's comprised of 10,000 plus unique um, metal diamond-shaped panels that we're fabricating in our facility. And then also the glass and glazing systems, which you can see below the metal panel. Currently, we're in mock-up, producing a full-scale mock-up one-to-one of all the components to see how the parts and pieces come to together. And you can see this incredible site in the mountains that we're working with, too. So this is a photograph taken one day. So you can see the primary structure uh, of a lot of really, really funky steel conditions and the secondary light gauge uh, framing and our systems going to attach on top of uh, those, those systems. So the coordination of those systems, which I'll talk a little bit more about too. Okay, so, so in, in approaching a project, we always take this uh, master model approach, which is containing, when we talked about that, the single source of truth. So using the 3D experience platform, we can coordinate the work of multiple trades. Um, in w just within this example, currently we're looking at the primary steel models coming from one vendor, um, some scanning information coming from some uh, reality capture that's been done on the site, some actual 2D drawing documentation, and then models from various subcontractors and trades within the project. So being able to integrate that and view that within a single model uh, sounds like a kind of obvious design review type thing in manufacturing, but in architecture is actually not that common. People tend to work within their silos and kind of reference models between trades, but being able to work within a single cohesive platform on the cloud, um, visible to different users within that project is something novel for us. Okay. So it's just showing some of the, the different layers of that. So here we're comparing um, the steel, the low level of detail steel model coming from the, the steel engineers, 
that's, you know, we also have a, a higher detail steel model for that's for the steel fabrication. And then here we have a, a point cloud scan integrated all within the same platform. Uh, so it can be cross-checked across the, the various formats. Okay. So now getting into the fabrication templates, I talked a little bit about, uh, mentioned that, showed that in the diagram about wanting to apply these systems across multiple projects. So um, within the, the glass and glazing system, we work with a lot of different suppliers. This is a, an old castle system, and that, um, that project brings together a, um, a series of typical details, extrusions, and, and connections within the system. Our approach to modeling and detailing that, we want a completely model-driven process from design and fabrication of that system, but we also aren't, aren't dealing with a single vendor or a, a single set of extrusions. So we, uh, we need a, a flexible system that can handle multiple vendors and inputs and different designs, but that can also provide consistent output for the way we're taking things through to manufacturing. Uh, and you can see just some of the on-site conditions on the image of the right, multiple trades coming together, the, the metal, uh, the, the, the light gauge framing, which I showed just going up on site, the anchor system, which is that, that bent metal shape, and then our, our curtain wall system in gray. So the way we approach that, um, we have within the 3D Experience platform leveraging the, the parametric wireframe engine, letting that drive the entire uh, production of the model. So within the, you know, we have a low resolution wireframe edges of, uh, you know, center lines, just kind of key control geometry within the model. And then that drives all the downstream ge geometry for, for fabrication. So here we're seeing a, a low level of detail model. Uh, linked to a parametric wireframe, which can then be modified and adjusted. And then that then also drives uh, not only just this simple sketch, but then also all the downstream fabrication information that's linked to that. So um, we're dealing with things, in, you know, comparing it to say manufacturing that aren't necessarily that complicated, but there's a lot of them and a lot of it to manage. So it's, it's a much larger kind of data management problem or a different data management problem in that way. Um, you know, we're dealing with off-the-shelf extrusions that are cut and, you know, mitered and, you know, just machined in different ways. Nothing really kind of that complex, but thousands of unique parts. And we just need a way to tag and manage and, and, and control how that information's produced. Okay, so, so going from that wireframe, now we're seeing the, uh, the production model, which is a full assembly model of all the parts and pieces coming together within this particular curtain wall. Um, so working, working with a, a vendor, we've developed some custom attributes that can be attached to the parts, an automated system that um, produces all the parts and pieces and creates an assembly model, which we can then use to feed downstream processes like fabrication um, for CNC fabrication and then also for uh, assembly within the shop. So just to show uh, the variation, you know, we do a lot of rectangular type frame installations, but within a single template, we can get consistent output and a range of, you know, output. So this is just for a, a previous project, but you can just, the same seed template was used to generate a whole host of, of downstream fabrication information, but providing consistency and um, traceability through all the parts and pieces throughout that whole process is a, a really big um, draw to the platform for us. So, so the once we've exported our, our 3D step files, that goes into a neutral step file format. Um, that's programmed into our, our five-axis CNC machining software uh, without actually having to interpret any 2D documentation. The, the typical users of this software are actually looking at the parts and piece drawings and actually recreating the parts within this platform. Um, we've, we've decided to, to cut that um, that, that loop out of the process and, and, and use a direct 3D model translation. So here we're using directly step, miles, uh, step files directly from the model, imported directly into the CAM software, and then that's used to then uh, drive our five-axis CNC machine. So, so here's a typical part being um, machined directly from the, the model parts. So. So one thing that's also uh, novel for us too is, is the production of the, the data that comes along through the, this approach. Um, you know, we've really been focused on using the model to drive the fabrication process and really, you know, to leverage the optimization around that. But what comes along for the, the ride 
is all the information that comes from that model too. Like now that we were able to see our parts and pieces, how they, they fit together, tag them, produce the production information. Well, now we can actually start to think, okay, we can quantify things, track them, barcode scan parts, and it's, it's starting to lead into other kind of industrial uses of infor the information now that we have that, um, that model that allows us to actually then scale into that. So um, being able to approach new ways of working with information as a side effect of, you know, just, just trying to deliver the model for fabrication. So this is, uh, again, a coordination slide. So util utilizing a robotic total station for a field layout. So here we're actually using points generated from the model to, to, to guide layout points within the real world. And then also as a verification check, 3D scanning of the as-built conditions and taking that back round trip into the model. So really being able to take everything all the way through. Okay, so that's, that's on the glass side. So now I want to dig a little bit into the, the metal panels. Um, so the, ch the challenge here, uh, we have a, a complex design of a, a double curved surface tiled into over 10,000 unique uh, aluminum triangles, as I've, as I've mentioned. So um, the typical way this would be handled uh, within, a, within the AC industry is that a, a low level of detail model would be, to, you know, generate the design and then it would, you know, be unfolded into a two-dimensional process and then detailed out as two-dimensional pieces. We really didn't have that, that luxury to do something like that here because of just the, the sheer quantity. So we've front-loaded our, our, our template approach using the, the sheet metal design tools to have all the fabrication information, uh, the, the, the relief angles, relief cuts, the, the holes, all the machining operations, uh, that could produce the unfolded flat pattern of the of the sheet metal part uh, embedded as well as all the output information so 2d assembly drawings for fabrication and then a, a one to one dwg file that we use for, for laser cutting all coming from the same template and then that template can then be deployed across the entire skin of the building so you can see each one of these panels, you know, looks basically the same, but they're slightly different. And maintaining the tolerance of this project from panel to panel, we have very tight tolerances of so three sixteenths of an inch installed tolerance in the real world is a very, I don't know from, from a manufacturing standpoint, it sounds like a mile, <laughs> but in terms of a construction tolerances, anything, you know, in that range is really, um, is really considered tight tolerances. So to be able to control and see um, what we're producing at this level of detail is really something that we wouldn't have been able to do without the use of the 3D Experience platform. Um, so I showed the template, and this is just some slides showing the, the, the automation and the deployment of that, uh, of that panel across the skin of the building. So here, just uh, instantiating three, three panels using an automated script that then deploys it across the, the skin of the building. So. So with without automation, you know, we can we can, with automation we can run these teams in a in a much smaller group uh, that really kind of knows what they're doing and, and, and be able to to work in, in what would normally have been a manual team of five six people really cranking through a lot of details can really be reduced to one or two people really kind of managing um, and you know producing that set of information in an automated way provided there's the investment and the upfront in the process. So. Okay, and then we'll show just a, a few fabrication shots in our, our shop using a variety of press break Im information. So there you can see the fabricated parts all coming together. And I, I think for us being able to see the relief cuts and how all the details and bits and pieces come together in the 3D model prior to actually getting it into the mock-up was, was a huge benefit too. Um, just a, a level of detail that um, we haven't really been able to kind of deal with until we got into using Katia sheet metal. Okay, and here we see some installation. I think with that, I'll leave it for questions. Thank you. <laughs>